Well, hello there. Welcome to a midweek moment of grace from Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church in Krivitz, Wisconsin. I'm Pastor Milky. Glad you joined us. Um, we are a day late this week. Uh, things were kind of busy th early this week at church, and so we got a day late, so sorry about the delay. I want to ask you a question today. If you were going to make a list of priorities, your priorities in life, what would be up there at the top of the list? Let me then ask you a more interesting and pointed question. Which of those items on your list would you be willing to give up to save your top priority? What if you had to give up the entire list just to keep that top priority. That's really what our scripture readings for this coming Sunday, July 30th, are going to have us wrestle with. The scripture readings call for an uncompromising assessment of what really matters to us. As we have been doing the last few weeks, once again we'll be listening to our Lord teach us about the kingdom of heaven. Now recall what that is. It's not a place. It's an activity. It's God's activity of calling sinners like you and me to faith, to salvation in Christ, into his kingdom and his ruling in our hearts and our lives now by the gospel. And that kingdom of heaven comes to us through the gospel, through God's word and sacraments. It, it's God's free gift to us. There, there's no cost we must pay to have it. In fact, there's no price we could pay to have it. it. We don't have sufficient funds. Thank God that Jesus paid it all for us. And now God gives it to us freely. So there is no cost to us for the kingdom of God. But there may be a cost for us to keep it. And so the question really before us this week is, what's it worth to you? What would you be willing to give up in order to keep the kingdom of God that God freely gives to you in his word and sacrament? The kingdom of God is worth everything. We'll see that the true treasure is found only in God and his eternal blessings for us in Christ. In the sermon, we're going to take a closer look at that gospel from Matthew 13 and, and hear what Jesus has to teach us about that in the parable of the treasure in a field and the pearl of great price. In our second reading from 1 Timothy, God, through the Apostle Paul, is going to speak words that could not be more timely in our, uh, timely um, for our generation. Words of warning not to trust in earthly wealth for our security, for our sense of worth, because earthly wealth is transient. It's temporary. Our sense of worth, our lasting security is found only in spiritual and eternal wealth that God himself provides for us, that, that treasure, that, that eternal treasure that God has waiting in heaven for us, wealth that is now ours by faith in Jesus and one day will be ours by sight. But for today, I'd like us together to consider the first reading from King, 1 Kings chapter 3. It, it's God who makes an amazing offer to a man named Solomon as, he's a, as he becomes 
king over God's people Israel. The Lord appeared to Solomon and Gibeon in a dream at night. God said, ask for whatever you want me to give you. God gives Solomon basically a blank check offer to ask for anything at all. Nothing's off limits. So what would you have asked for? If anything at all in the world could be yours, what would you ask for? The choice that God gave Solomon was basically the choice between unlimited riches and spiritual wealth. Can you imagine that dilemma? What what should I choose? What should I value? The things of this world or the things of God? Now we know what Solomon asked for. He asked for the ability to fulfill his vocation as the king of God's people. God responded to him by giving him wisdom like no other. Now, I don't know about you, but I marvel at Solomon's faith in choosing great wisdom. Godly wisdom over great riches. Especially because I so often fail in the pitifully small choices I make. It, it's not for all the riches in the world that, that we turn down spiritual wealth, is it? Maybe it's for paltry, that paltry overtime, those paltry overtime hours, or a little extra in the bank account that we shaved off our offering to the Lord. Maybe it's those few hours sleeping or playing sports or enjoying pastimes instead of spending it with the Lord and his people. For such small things, we are willing to trade, an op way to trade away opportunities for true spiritual wealth, aren't we? In Solomon, God gives us an example of what he means by spiritual wealth. It, it doesn't mean that you and I have to take some vow of poverty. He doesn't ask us to, to forego all earthly treasure. God just doesn't want us to value those things more than that which is of greatest value. When you think of the choices that we are often faced with. There are many things that can come between us and our Savior, and from enjoying the, the blessings and treasures of his eternal kingdom already now. Now, they don't have to be sinful things in and of themselves. Most often they aren't. Most often the, the choices we face are between blessings from God. There's nothing at all wrong with them unless they become so important to us that they crowd out Christ and his kingdom out of our lives or at least push him and his kingdom into the corner. In other words, they're blessings from God that are not obviously bad in and, in and of themselves. The, the problem comes in is when we value them more greatly than the giver and his greatest gifts. Some of you, like me, are old enough to remember the Sears and Roebuck catalogs. As they presented the things they had for sale, they would offer various products of varying, varying quality and price. They would label them good, better, and best. Isn't that how it is with our choices that we are faced with? Most of them involve the blessings of God. Those that have lesser value compared to those that have greater value. And the problem is, is that we so often end up choosing God's blessings of lesser value 
those that are temporary, instead of those that have greater value, that are eternal. God doesn't mind that we value earthly treasures. Otherwise, he wouldn't give them to us. He just doesn't want us to value them more than his greater treasures he gives us, spiritual treasures, eternal treasures. After choosing spiritual treasure, God blessed Solomon in unbelievable ways. Just do the math on the 25 tons of gold that was part of Solomon's annual income. Now, God doesn't promise us that much gold. But he does promise us that as we seek first his kingdom, he, he will give us everything else we need. May his promise and his grace move us to trust him and to daily choose wisely, to choose first that which has real and lasting value. We close our time together this morning with... Uh, a few verses of hymn 533 from Christian Worship 93. I love your kingdom, Lord. I love your kingdom, Lord, the place of your abode, the church our blessed Redeemer saved with his own precious blood. Beyond my highest joy, I prize its heavenly ways, its sweet communion, solemn vows, its hymns of love and praise. I love your church, O God, your saints in every land, dear as the apple of your eye, engraven on your hand. For them my tears shall fall, for them my prayers ascend, for them my cares and toils be given, till toils and cares shall end. Sure as your truth shall last, to Zion shall be given, the brightest glories earth can yield, and brightest bliss of heaven. May God bless and keep you, and keep you treasuring his kingdom above all. In his name, amen.